Welcome to Just Minding My Business Radio, where we are moving at the speed of God, learning what we didn't know we didn't know. I'm your host, Ida Crawford. And I'm your co-host, Ruth Haskins. So grab a pen and paper and get ready for information that you can use. Welcome to Just Mind and My Business Media. I'm glad you guys are joining us today. Today, I am so excited to bring to you Eric Estevez. Eric, you want to tell people about your journey and who you are? Absolutely. First of all, uh, thank you for having me. Uh, it's a, it's an honor to be part of uh, uh, of, of this uh, format to continue to add value to the community. And and you know, as far as my background. Um, you know, after 14 years of just working my way up in the corporate ladder, um, you know, I, I started to, you know, thankfully was able to start to um, dive into some entrepreneurial passions. I, you know, I wrote a children's book with my wife and we want to continue, uh, you know, publishing some, some, uh, some, some upcoming, some new editions. And, uh, you know, I started flipping mobile apps and I just started to find that I wanted to be a business owner, right? And um, and then I led up to my my investing in real estate. You know, I started investing in real estate passively. Um, started to learn about flipping homes and hard money and investing in syndication. And I loved it so much that I decided to take a leap of faith and and leave my uh, my uh, you know Fortune 50 uh, company position uh, and 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 enter the lending world. And, you know, I did it because, you know, my, my father, who's been who's been doing this for about 25 years, was, was a one man team. But I thought that he can provide me with some knowledge as a coach as I continue to help build the business and take it to the next level. Um, and here we are today. You know, so, um, you know, five years later, we built a successful business, uh, you know, uh, you know, a rapid successful business, being able to build a great team. And then I've been able to go ahead and dive into some other businesses and use some of the same strategies uh, that, that I use when building uh, my lending uh, business. Okay. And I like that entrepreneur um, spirit, because at the end of the day, it's all about being able to bring products and services to help the community. And, you know, I always believe that we're not here for ourselves. We're here to support others. So Correct. thank you for doing what you do. Right now, you're into the real estate arena. That's the full time thing that you do now. Yeah. So um, I, I, I uh, my specialty is is mortgage lending, right? So uh, you know, I I've grown a business and partner with you know uh, real estate agents across different states uh, to continue to help families, uh, you know, buy homes, and and the majority of the people I help, Ida, are, are first-time home buyers, and we really believe um, that one of the reasons why we've grown at a fast pace is because we focus on education uh, first. You know, um, and, and you know, I, I, we really went um, to to educate the Hispanic community, for example, in their language. And we're on Spanish Channel Television every Sunday morning, and we have a segment in a, in, in a show in Telemundo. Um, and and our job is just to educate people, right? And I think that uh, um, that is the the main business that I'm in, um, you know, but the good thing is, is that using my 14 years of leadership experience where I've led up to 500 people at, at a time, you know, I've been able to build a great system and great team. So, um, you know, we can continue to scale without my having to spend all my time in it, which now allows me to continue to go out and, and, and build other businesses, right? And I've done that, you know, in the last year or so, one of them being a virtual assistant company where you can leverage, um, you know, uh, uh, you know, uh, you can outsource uh, work outside of the U.S. for for relatively low cost, which is what corporations have been doing for 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 generations, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, and, and really, and really, um, be able to leverage that to have a deeper reach much faster because we're our own entity, right? We're our own entrepreneur, or solopreneur, so you will. Um, and then most recently, you know, one of the things that has really got me excited, Ida, is my daughter. I have a 19-year-old daughter, and she's an up-and-coming music recording artist, and, and I'm her wow. manager. So I'm learning about the music business. 
um, you know, and, you know, having meetings and, and, you know, yesterday we were at a photo shoot. Um, we're going to be shooting a video for one of her singles uh, in the next few weeks. So I've been able to, you know, uh, continue to build other businesses using some some of the same strategies that, that I've learned in, in my past experiences. Yes. And, and talking about strategies, you know, be you know, being able to transfer strategies that you've learned in other industries, how important is that? I, I think that's paramount, right? I, you know, you know what, what we, we are worth our experience, right? You know, I, I think, you know, how we, how we get paid is, is based on the, the value that we put out in the marketplace, right? Which was famous, famously put out there by Jim Rohn. Um, and, and I think with with the experiences that we had, right, you know, 10, 15, 20 years of working with people, of of problem solving, that's transferable in any industry that you're working in, right? There might be some specificity um, in, this, in, in, in distinct industries, but if you know how to deal with people, right, if you know how to hire people, you know how to develop people, right, um, that's something that's going to go along in any kind of business that you're developing, right? So it's so important. Um, that now after 15, 20 years of, of working that you can say, you know what, I have the foundation for me to go out and be successful in whatever I do. Yes, absolutely. So now you're in the virtual world of business as well. So how do you, how do you leverage modern technology to scale your business? That's an amazing question, right? I, I think you know, as a solopreneur, as an entrepreneur, right, um, you have to understand that, you know, you have certain strengths, but you also have to be accountable for your weaknesses, right? Um, and the best way to really scale is to hire people, right, to, to be able to take on the things that you're not the best at. Right? You have to surround yourself with great people. And, and when you're initially starting a business and, you know, the capital quite isn't there, it takes a couple of years, right, to start really generating some good profit, right? You really want to go and, and, and say, okay, well, how can I, you know, uh, leverage my strengths and my weaknesses um, by outsourcing? So that's what essentially I've done. So, you know, I've always been a big picture kind of guy. Um, I've been a developer, a team leader. You know, uh, when, when, when we're talking about the details that it takes to write alone or to, you know, do the follow up and, and do these cold calls. Right. I'm not good at it. I don't like it. Right. So so my first virtual assistant that I hired about three and a half years ago, she makes a lot of calls for me. And her job was just to make calls, put them on my calendar. And then when I'm, I could be moving around and, and connecting with people. And instead of me making calls, I'm just connecting right to people. Right. Um, I have an assistant that helps me. Um, fill my calendar up and I'm and a successful day to me is just to connect with as many people as possible to influence as many people as possible to help as many people as possible so when you take away those tasks that you can outsource for you know here it would be $15 an hour minimum wage more or less right but now you can go ahead and do that outside of the country you know for for a fraction of the cost and and, and as we grow we can a you know either uh, hire more Right. Um, or we can start hiring people, you know, um, that are in an office, you know, that, that you want to make sure that is there with you. Um, so you have to just make sure where your business is at and what you can afford. Yes, absolutely. Now, how do you choose the right person? And I think it says the right partners in crime. <laughs> um, that's the million dollar question. Right. Yes. I think, uh, <laughs> I think that's one of the hardest things to do, you know, yeah. um, you know, I think, I think we as people, you know, we're always developing, we're always changing. I think it takes a great leader to, to um, be able to quickly assess someone's strengths and someone's weaknesses um, and been able to put them in the right position to really accentuate those strengths. Right. Mm -hmm. um, and, and also be able to, have an open line of communication to be able to change and pivot right along with what the person wants or, and or needs right a person you know that starts right out of college is different than a person that has you know a family to feed right what are their motivations and I think that if you understand that I think you know um and you and you always have an open line of communication with your team you're always going to evolve with them you know I think um you know going back to choosing the right person I never choose, I ne when I hire people, I hire people from scratch and I typically don't care about some of the skills that they have, right? What I care about is in, in, when I'm meeting with them and I'm interviewing them, 
do I think that they have integrity? Do I think that they're gonna that they that they have a, a, a passion to move upward? Are, are they gonna have a good work ethic? Because if you you can't really teach work ethic, right? right? You can teach those skills that are gonna make them successful in a specific job. But if somebody comes to you hungry with integrity, gonna do the right thing, um, I think you should be. They're gonna they're gonna grow and out outpace people that come in and maybe have skill sets for a few years, but they don't have that hunger. They don't have that, 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 that um, want to continue to do more. So I think that hiring for that is, is key. Um, and then, you know, I, when we teach and we train, right. Um, and then we promote from within, right. Um, I think that you create a great foundation of, of, of that culture that, Hey, if I stick with Eric and his leadership, right. I'm going to get the most, he's going to, he's, I'm going to give him the most that I can. He's going to get the most out of me and develop me. And quite honestly, I, uh, the most fulfillment is when you develop people and yes. you, and you impact their lives. I think that that's more fulfilling that than dollars, right? Yes. I have to agree with you because you, you know, you want to definitely look at the person's drive, you know, yeah. and integrity is number one. But like you said, you can't teach people how to have integrity. These are in, in things. These are things within the individual. So I definitely agree with you on that. When you are building your empire, how do you plan for certain successes? How do you put those pieces in place and execute upon them? Another great question. You know, I think um, when you're starting any business, right, or even if you've been in business for a while and you said, you know what, this is my goal. We're at the start of 2023. What a great time to reset, right, have clearly defined goals, which I think is one of the first steps is what do you what what do you want to accomplish this year? Right. And then you start to reverse engineer. Right. And, and you can do this for any industry, because if you're in sales and you want to hit a certain volume amount, you're going to say, okay, well, right. What is that? What does that consist of on a monthly basis, on a weekly basis, on a daily basis? So if you reverse engineer and now you pick the activities that's going to help you get there and you know what you have to do on a daily basis and you hold yourself accountable to that and you pivot when you don't reach that goal on day one or day two, those are the people that are going to reach those goals, right? There's a lot of people that will put something on their vision board or put it or write something down yet on a daily basis, they're not moving towards that goal. And then come halfway through the year, they're nowhere near that goal and they get discouraged. Right? Yeah. So, so I think the first step is whatever business you're in, what's my goal? What does that look like? Right. Even if it's health, right. You know, what's my goal and, you know, do I want to, do I want to get fit? Do I want to lose weight? Do I want to run a marathon? And now you reverse engineer and talk about how you're going to get there. How are you going to change your diet? How are you going to change your exercise? Right. Are you going to be training for the marathon? How often? So I think when you do that, right, you kind of break it down and compartmentalize, right. What you're trying to do for the year. And if you hold yourself accountable, it's mathematics. You'll be able to achieve those, those goals. Yes, absolutely. Now you, the, the one thing you said is holding yourself accountable. Okay. That's a pretty big one for a lot of people because accountability is, is if nobody else knows, we can either go one way or the other way. So yes. how do you hold yourself accountable for what you say you want to do? <laughs> An another, another great question. You know, I think, I think, uh, um, first of all, you have to, you have to, if you don't plan and if you don't know what you're supposed to do on a daily basis, it's tough to hold yourself accountable to those activities. So if you don't take the time to do that, right. You know, what am I supposed to be doing today? Right. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's going to be difficult to do that. So if you know what, if you know what you're supposed to do, right. Um, you know, and you're, and you wake up every morning and you have a great routine and you're writing things down, right. And you have a plan in your, in your head, right. It's easy to go back and check, right. The progress from a day-to-day -day basis. And I agree with you. I think that's one of the most difficult things for people to do. And I think that really is what separates, right. The top 1% in any industry, is the accountability because they will hold themselves accountable. When you look at the great athletes, the Kobe Bryants, the Michael Jordans, right? Nobody had to hold them accountable because they held themselves accountable to a higher standard. They were practicing more than anybody else, right? So in the end, when you look at the greats, it was accountability that really set those people apart. And I think it's the same in business. You know, um, I will suggest 
get an accountability part of getting a coach, right? Um, you know, going back to those same grades that we just talked about, right? They were coached by the same individual, right? So the fact of the matter is, but, but not, not the same basketball coach, but the same life coach, mm -hmm. right? So the fact of the matter is, is get yourself a coach, get yourself a someone that you admire that, you know, and, and obviously there's a lot of great professionals, great coaches that, that you pay for the, the coaches, but you know what? It's worth it because they have a resume and they're going to be able to help you get to your point much quicker because they've already done it and they've helped other people do it. So when I first joined the industry, I didn't make a dollar, but I understood the power of mentorship and the power of coaching. I signed up for a coaching program day one. And I did not want to reinvent the wheel. I did exactly what they told me to do, right? And I was consistent with it. I held myself accountable. Um, and, and I met with my coach once a month. And, you know, sometimes I failed and they kicked me, me in the butt when, when, I, when, I, when I failed, right? But that's what progress is, right? You know, that's what we do as parents, right? It's we have to hold our kids accountable and we have to give them tough love sometimes and we have to recognize them when they do well. So the fact of the matter is, is, you know, make sure that you have a clearly defined mentor and or coach that's gonna hold you accountable as you progress. Because if you do this on, on your own, you may get there, but it's gonna take you a lot longer. Absolutely, absolutely. And then it also helps you to build up your confidence muscle because sometimes in new businesses, you know how it is, you know, you're doing all this upfront work, you ain't making no money, you know, and you start to question, you know, is this going to work? And I like that you talked about having that accountability partner because you need that. You know, running a business ain't like working for somebody. You ain't going to get paid every two weeks. It's a lot of upfront work with no money. Correct. I, I, um, I did a training uh, the other day for my, my organization. We, we're, you know, a national bank and, you know, we had several hundred you know, loan originators there. And I was fortunate to be asked to, to do a, 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 a live session. And we talked about that mindset, right? You know, and even now in the mortgage industry, right? It's, it's you know, a huge reduction over last year, right? Um, and, and, and a lot of people are worried. A lot of people are nervous. Um, and, you know, my message was, we have to measure our success, maybe not on dollar signs right now, right? Maybe not on the amount of families we help right now, is on the activities that we're doing. Are we being consistent with those activities? And I am just like anyone else. And, uh, and you know, any, any um, leader is like anyone else where they wake up sometimes and it's, and, and it's tough and there's anxiety and there's some nervous energy. But I think the difference is, right, that the winners put one foot in front of the other and just move and just go and, and, and have to believe in the process. Um, you know, and that was my message. You have to believe in your process because if you are the one that is doing these activities on a daily basis, even though the dollars aren't there, right? Um, but you know that you're making progress and you're learning and you're looking deep in yourself, holding yourself accountable mm -hmm. and you're experiencing growth, right? The dollars will follow, right? Um, and, and I think that it's a tough thing to swallow when, when, when you have bills to pay, you know? Um, but I think... I, <laughs> I think you also have to say, you know what, you know, you know what, I, I made progress today. I made progress this week and this month. And I think that that's what eventually leads to success. Yes, I, exactly. Exactly. I have to agree, you know, because, you know, I remember starting this business. And I mean, when I first started, I was looking for people to interview. I was like putting my girlfriends or yeah. anybody that, <laughs> that I could find. But what I quickly, as I continue to do it, people knew that I was gonna be, was gonna be there. Then they started coming to me. And that's because you they know that you've you add value, like you know, people start things and give things up, but when you're consistent and you're mm -hmm. doing this and they say, wow, they that's pretty good. Wow. Like that helped me today or that helped somebody else. And now they want to be part of the movement that you have created. Yes, absolutely. And the guests that we have all bring value, all bring value. I mean, there's not an interview that I do that I don't take away something to support me or even just confirmation that, you know, I'm doing these steps, I'm doing just like we're talking right now, and I'm listening to all the ingredients that's needed to be successful. And in my mind, I'm like, I'm doing that. I'm doing that, you know, that, you know, so it's like a confirmation as well. 
wow you know yeah, positive, so, positive positive reinforcement absolutely absolutely so with your um mortgage company um let's talk about how you help families to be able to get that first house because i mean i remember getting my first house and i'm telling you it was nerve-wracking and having somebody to educate you that's key i, I agree i think education is key you know and and listen you know owning real estate and owning your house. This is not a get rich quick scheme, but it's a get rich quick for sure, right? Real estate is a number one investment um, that, that people look towards, but it's a long-term game, you know, um, you know, but houses always appreciate in, 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 in value. And I teach the fact that, you know, owning a home is, right, the path to generational wealth. And, and I help the minority community, you know, uh, that's 80% of, of my clientele, because I think that, you know, the education, you know, um, hasn't been there, right? Um, you know, uh, you know, my father was a first homeowner, right? And, and, and there's people that, you know, generations and generations of home ownership, and they understood the process to teach them. Sometimes if we have, you know, even, you know, immigrant families coming into the yes, they do not know what the process is. They don't know that, that this is actually uh, something that's attainable. You know, so I, I, I've, we've prided ourselves in the fact that we really truly educate the community, not only when people are just thinking about buying a house, but even throughout the process, it's important to know, right, you know, what that looks like, because buying a house can be very exciting, but it can also be very scary, you know, and if you're working with the right people, right, that's going to hold your hand and walk you through the process, you're going to feel much more comfortable, and to us, that's paramount, because, you know, we're trying to be these, these advisors to these individuals for the rest of their lives, right, it's not a transactional thing, we want to make sure that, you know, people call me for non-mortgage related things, and I love it because I'm top of mind to my past clients, and I can refer them to to different people that's going to help them, right? Whether it's financial planning, whether it's an accounting, right? Whether it's somebody that wants to start to invest, um, you know, uh, uh, into real estate, you know, I, I want to be a, a touch point for people to try to help them find a solution through financing or whatever it is. So, uh, you know, I think education is key. You know, I do at the beginning of the year, I do a lot of first time home buying webinars and seminars, um, you know, uh, and what, because I, I just feel like it's so important, especially at the beginning of the year, right? Everybody, right, has their vision board and everybody says, I want to be a homeowner in 2023, right? So I think it's, it's great to really kind of kick off the year with education and we do it every single year and we have five or six first time home buyer seminars already booked, right, already scheduled, um, so we can start helping the community out. Right. And, and, you know, I had a Facebook live earlier today with a realtor where I meet with them every, every Friday for 15 minutes and just go live and just ask questions, answer questions, and just talk about, you know, the current state of the industry. And we just want to be known as that source where people feel comfortable. And I do use social media a lot. I do leverage it a lot. And a lot of people reach out to me through social media because they see that I'm educating people and I'm a goofball too on social media, right? I show myself, I show who I am, but in the end, I try to add value. Yes. Yes. And that's important. Exactly. And you know what? And now, you know, with the knowledge that I have, you know, I want to make sure that I teach my kids and I want them to purchase a house as soon as they can, right? And and start start learning about the process. And that's one of our goals, right? We've built, you know, we've built credit for both of our kids, right? I have two teenagers, right? And and you know, we start that process because again, I'm learning this and 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 as a father that I'm trying to lead them in the right way, I want to make sure that I'm teaching them, right? Uh, you know, how to be financially stable at a much younger age than I was, right? So yes. I think we should do that. Absolutely. So if people want to connect with you, how do they do so? It, Instagram is the fast, the fastest way. I'm the Eric Estevez. You can always reach out to me there. Um, I'm also on TikTok, right? uh, Eric the Lender. Um, so I try to uh, be funny on there as well as informative. Um, or you can also go to a webpage, uh, hustlesmartandhard.com. Um, where I have, you know, just free, uh, a free template of 10 business building tips and some of which we talked about today. Mm, okay. Okay. And I like what you talked about with kids teaching your children. It's important, right? Um, and and I, I do feel that, um, that, that especially the, the minority community um, has more access to information now more than ever. 
I feel that they they are becoming more financially savvy. Um, yeah. I feel there's some progress, but you know, I think it's up to us to continue to add value to get to that, you know, to 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 close that gap much quicker. You know, it's true. My my uh, one of the goals that I, I have for my daughter, and it's a lofty goal, but I want her to sign to a million dollar label, right? I'm I'm a manager for her now, right? She's a music artist, and and I want to sign her to a label for a million dollars. And I'm already telling her, what are you going to do with that million dollars? You're going to reinvest it in your career, but you're going to buy a house. Right? So you're going to buy a house with that, and, a, and a multifamily house. And you're going to buy a multifamily. You're going to use the FHA program. You're going to house hack. And all the things that I teach in my seminars that I conduct, right, I want her to do it. Uh, and she and she, she she's all for it. She goes, I'm, I'm down. And luckily, you know, she's been a stage kid for a while. She's been on TV and commercials and sites of talent. So she has earned her own money. But she also knows, right, that, you know, she has to manage it and whatnot. So we've been teaching her that for a while. Yes, absolutely. So let's talk about your daughter a little bit and what's in her her career. And how old is she? So my daughter's 19. Um, her stage that she's at, her name is Angelis Mariah. You can look her up on on Spotify, on iTunes. Uh, you know, you can look her up on on uh, um, on Instagram as well. Um, uh, a- Angel YSE Mariah. Um, and yeah, so she's been you know she's been signed to a talent agency in New York City for the last 10 years and she's done you know tv and commercials and print ad um and she started to sing uh and compete and you know just local talent shows and when we when she said i want to do this we said okay let's 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 go ahead and, and let's do it and she started getting vocal coaches she went to a performing arts high school uh one of the best in new jersey um and during covid she she actually was picked as an intern uh, to, to uh, as she got a scholarship to go to the Clive Davis Institute of Recorded Music in Brooklyn, and uh, and she met a lot of great people, and from that, those relationships spawned her career. So she was able to write a song uh, with somebody that she met in this program, and they put it out into the world, and she said. Oh, I guess I'm a recording artist now. And uh he <laughs> said, hey, let's go to the studio and it's right. And it's and it's she has she has five or six singles out right now. And uh and and uh you know she her first performance was in front of eight thousand people, right? Um wow. and she and she uh you know she she does it all, she sings, dances, and acts, she's a triple threat. Um and uh, she signed a five-song production deal with an independent label. Um, and we have some unreleased music. And, you know, yesterday we were in Brooklyn shooting all day. Um, and in the next, you know, a uh, couple weeks, we should start filming a, a, her first music video. So wow. we're excited. Wow. Wow. I'm just, this has been amazing. Just all the different things that you're doing and how you are, you know, creating generational uh, success in your family. Wow. <laughs> yeah, I, I I I love your I love your energy that you put that you put out uh, your positivity. Yeah, and maybe you maybe you can have Angelise on, and uh, and I I would love to you know share her growth with the world. Absolutely. And again, how do people get in touch with you? Um, shoot me an Instagram, uh, my DM, the Eric Estevez, E R I C E S T E V E Z, um, and you know I'll send you you know uh, where else you can find me from there. Uh, but yeah, that's the easiest way to do it. And, and I look forward to helping anybody that needs it. Yes. Yes. Cause I really enjoyed this collaboration with you. Thank you. Anna. It has been, been as well. For me. And I'm looking forward to having you back and definitely having your daughter. Yeah, we would love it. We would love it. Thank you so much, Eric, for your time and your wisdom. And I know our audience is over the top, uh, listening to you. So thank you, and we are looking forward to more. Thank you, Ada. Appreciate you. Absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you for tuning in to Just Minding My Business Radio. I'm your host, Ada Crawford. And I'm your co-host, Ruth Hatton. We hope you enjoyed the show and appreciate you stopping by. Many blessings to you and yours.